Welcome to my podcast. I'm Manina, and you are listening to an episode of Aspire Big, Inspire Bigger podcast. Hey, hey, Inspirers. I see that you're here to find out more about what Aspire Big, Inspire Bigger has to offer you. Let me introduce myself. I am Coach Mo, short for Manina. I am a Harlem, New York City, born and raised women's empowerment coach. I empower healing women to rework their mindset and break through repetitive cycles and take charge of their purpose, their time, and their personal development while creating the life they deserve through one-on-one and group coaching. I am truly here to support you. Are you looking to change your lifestyle and transform yourself into a better version of yourself? Unlock the secrets for a more productive, efficient, and fulfilling life with our personal development workshops. Become a part of our growing, vast community by simply signing up and attending. First 30 days free on me. (laughs) We have bi-weekly personal development workshops, Q&A sessions. In case you miss a session, video recordings of group sessions will be made available. And we have expert guest master classes private vast online community access, and more. The vast community is a safe place for busy women to meet, learn, and grow with other like-minded women. Embrace your full potential. Learn to feel more in control, more present, and more excited about your life with this exclusive online community. This is a community filled with women who are dedicated to sharpening their life skills and committed to executing their life's vision. And if you don't know your life's vision, this group is designed to help you see the vision of what can be. As you join the vast community, be willing to put in the work as we break down and get rid of old negative habits, negative self-talk, negative self-image, and tendencies that we may have to self-isolate and self-sabotage. Let's get started on transforming your life from the inside out. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Hey, hey, Inspirers. Welcome back to the Aspire Big, Inspire Bigger podcast. I have another special guest today. Her name is Janiqua Alvarez. She is the founder of Paw to Palms, and she's going to tell us all about uh, Paw to Palms and all about who she is. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. You're welcome, you're welcome, Asaya. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so, so excited. I'm so, so excited. So basically here at Paw to Palms, right, we are dedicated to ending the senseless suffering of neglect and abuse canines um, through adoption and foster programs. And I also connect the public to establishments that offer 100% free spay and neuter services if you live in the Brooklyn or the Bronx area, um, vaccinations. Um, they, they, they do it. I don't care how old your dog is. Again, if you live in Brooklyn and the Bronx, completely free. One of the things that I love about it is because that's one thing that stress people out, right? Is sometimes when their dog is sick, say them with cancer, something, those yeah. things can be so expensive. Yeah. And then what? You don't have no money, then the dog can't get treated. So I think that's one of the cool and dope things that my company offers. Um, not a lot of people know that millions of shelter animals, right, are being euthanized under questionable circumstances, right? In fact, euthanasia is one of the most common causes of death in healthy, adoptable, but just unwanted animals, right? So that means a puppy can be euthanized only because a simple math, the overpopulation of the animal shelters, right? And that's basically where my mission is. I want to pull those dogs from that list, right? And allow them to live in a in a free space where they can carry out their love there and be loved, healthy, and just happy. You know, because yeah. some of them dogs, now I get it if some of them dogs are ill, right? And that is the reason why dogs should be euthanized because they're just ill and they don't, we don't want them to suffer, but it's not like that no more. It's becoming a huge, huge problem. 
I rescued my first dog, Taylor, about three years ago. And uh, she she was like, well, you know, a little crazy. Um, you know, just a lot to deal with. And I was able to turn that dog around. And she is the most lovable dog. Not only that, she's very well with children. And that's very important, right? I then began to go to different animal shelters and and volunteer because be so hands-on. Like I just, I gravitated more towards the dogs that weren't getting adopted, like the pit bulls, the ones mm. that was just getting seen by, like they were, love. you know? We yeah, love so, the in New York. <laughs> exactly, you know, because um, over here in, um, by Linden Boulevard, where I live, the way the animal shelter is, it is split up. So it's one side for little dogs and one side for the bigger dogs. So where do you think more families would go if they have younger children? You know, not that it's their fault. It's just no. you would just gravitate to the puppy and the little dogs, not knowing that these dogs are so amazing. Um, so I went there, started volunteering, and I got another dog in my house. And mind you, I got my own apartment. Brooklyn, it's not so big, but I'm like, yo, I can't help it. Got another dog. Now, this dog was also a little bit um, on her list, it was just like a lot of bad things. Um, and I was like a little scared. But was, something gravitated towards me getting that dog. And her name was Daisy. And I got her. Her transition, um, this fight was a little bit longer than Taylor's, my first dog. But girl, when you start seeing the dog starting to trust more, it's like, yo, I'm really doing it. Like this is happening. And and she did a 360. Now she's living out in a family, like in, if I'm not mistaken, like Jersey or PA, but it's a lot of land. She needed a lot of land, but I was able to, to turn her around too. So then I'm like, yo, let me start a company because I like this feeling. Like I like that I'm able to do this and it's actually um, changing the view and perspective of people when they look at pit bulls or any other big dog that was once labeled not adoptable. And um, I'm 501c3 now, girl. Um, I just got my acceptance letter the other day. And that's kind of big for me because um, aside from this, right, I got my own dog line. I'm a um, self-published author um, of a children's book called Harper and the Wagon Tail plus the coloring book. Cause as a child, I wanted to like, actually like be hands on. And what if a mother is at work, right? Because look at the times we in, we can't always be around our kids. So there we go. That don't mean you can't read my book, but you could actually color with the other one. And that's why I wanted to bring out that. And I also have my dog line, which is very affordable, right? Because if you find these dog toys as fire and the way my dog's teeth are, you buy a dog toy that's like twenty or thirty dollars, which it looks really cool. But your dogs will chew that up in like up. two seconds. So mine's is a little yeah. bit more affordable. So aside to um to to my organization, I'm trying to do that to help me save a little bit of money to try to get to where I'm going. But now with the five hundred one c three, boom, I'm actually legit and I'm actually be able to get more donations right yeah. the bigger donations that I need to build this um, establishment this facility that I'm trying to um, provide for these animals I love that I love that so yeah. uh you know living in New York City like I was saying we we all no matter what borough we uh, grew up in I'm in Harlem but no matter what borough we grew up mm -hmm. in I uh <laughs> we always see the pit bulls or the bigger dogs and mm -hmm. um you know, like the guys, mm -hmm. <laughs> the guys, the guys outside, they love mm -hmm. those type of dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, I grew up a little frightful of dogs, but I had a childhood friend who had a huge dog. I don't even know what he was mixed with. I know it was one part it's shepherd <laughs> and then another part just big. Right. <laughs> One time we was walking down the street and they was like, yo, they got a horse with them. Like, they got the wolf. The German like, shepherds are typically huge by itself. So if it's mixed with something, girl, whew, mm -hmm. you got yeah. to have something on your hands. The most sweet dog um, ever. And then um, she got another dog. Um, his name was Julia. She got another dog uh, was mixed with Pitt. I'm not sure what else she was mixed with, but her name was mm -hmm. Rocky. Fell in love with Rocky. Oh, Aww. man. She was, she just like, she was just like that little, uh, the little sister that like, 
clumsy and want to be all around y'all all the time. Sometimes she would get so mm-hmm. excited that she would try to run and scratch mm-hmm. at the same time, fall, mm-hmm. fall over. Like she like, just don't know. We call that the zoomies. So if you ever see a dog like so happy and it's like not knowing what to do, girl, it got the zoomies. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I loved Rocky. I loved Rocky. And that's when I, I started being able to open up to dogs. I did have a dog. Um, she was a Mountie Shitsu uh, mix, but I had to give her away. Mm-hmm. And I found a good family for her a couple years back, mm-hmm. though. Um, I was so sad to let her go, but I had to. I was like transitioning in life out of a hey. long term relationship and just I I couldn't I couldn't keep up with her. It was like I got a new job, mm-hmm. I was working all day. Right. It was a lot. I couldn't I, I didn't want her in the house by mm-hmm. herself. Like that that was a terrible feeling. Unlike me, <laughs> clearly you didn't have a fear of dogs. So why dogs though? Why Where's the so the before from? even all of this came about, when I was younger, I lived with my grandmother in the house of, I believe, like 13 um, dogs. And she was an animal person. Um, even though we lived with like 13 dogs, she would get up in the morning at like five something in the morning and feed the birds. She would have squirrels um, coming up to her. So I think I was like born into it. And then... As I grew, I was like, okay, I'm around animals, but I never got a chance to have my own dog. And I think it's just because my living situation, I still live with my mom. Maybe she didn't want a dog. So I didn't really have that dog to be dependent on me solely, right? So it wasn't a big thing. But then once I met Taylor, and then it was just my my grandmother passed, God bless her. And I think she's like living through me because... Hey, hey, Inspirers, wear what you believe in across your chest. We created ABIB Apparel Clothing because we wanted to foster a community around kindness and compassion. Join the movement, wear your values, and spread the love. Remember to inspire big so that you can inspire bigger. Lady, y'all. Not only that I'm focused on dogs, right? That's just because that's what I've been around. I'm a little bit more educated, but I got a street cat named Daisy. If you follow me, you see like I made her a cat shelter. So I'm starting to gravitate. I say there was like a duck that was like roaming the streets. And luckily my homeboy, a duck, no, I think it was like a chicken, a chicken. And my homeboy like runs this chicken coop. And they admit, my friends immediately called me like, yo, Niqua, there's this chicken running around. I actually documented on my Facebook too. And girl, I saved the chicken. So nobody's out here dying, honey, if I'm wrong. <laughs> but so I think animals. that's where the love of animals actually came from. And then once I was able to have my own, it just brought me back to reality. Like, well, this was what I was born to do. Me being able to have that gift to change these animals that were labeled this way, I think that's what separates me from someone that loves dogs. Like, I love dogs, but I mainly go for the ones that, like, need it. And, like the and it's not about me. Yeah, it's not yeah. about me no more. You get it? Like, if I don't do this work and save these animals, then they're going to die. Like, because, right, mm-hmm. they're on a euthanasia list mm-hmm. for no reason. <laughs> so yeah. um, that's where it originally came from. Like, I was already born into it, my, my grandmother. Um, but when I actually was able to have my own dog and for me to know, well, damn, it really depends on me. Like, um, I have children, yeah. two beautiful children, but they could talk, right? They could be like, yo, mommy, I'm hungry. <laughs> or mommy, someone hit me and I didn't like oh. the way I felt when that happened. Then I'm right. able to step in and correct that the right way. And I'm doing that for these dogs now. Yes, giving them a voice. Mm-hmm. No, it's true um, that it's so important to stand up for, yeah, be an advocate for people who, people or pets or anything that can't be an advocate for itself. And especially if it's at a super high rate, you know, um, but it's something that I want to say about uh, when you mentioned your grandma, maybe, uh, you know, living through it, <laughs> through you, you know, it, it's so funny. I, um, I do personal development for um, millennial women now, right? So I narrowed it down to millennial women. I feel like that's that's where I am, right? right. I can help right. uh, I can help us the best. Right. I get to right. live with us, you know. I get to live right. in our world. So uh, 
I just found out earlier this year, or maybe it was at the end of last year, that uh, my mom passed away when I was 12 from uh, breast cancer, right? So I didn't, that. thank you, thank you. I didn't know her as woman to woman or what she did before I was born. You know, okay. I just know her as mommy, what we did as a family, huh? you know, her, uh -huh. uh, me and my dad. Uh, but before I was born, I didn't know what she was doing out here in these streets and Harlem streets, living her best <laughs> life, you know? Uh, right. But come to find out, she was, um, you know, she was a super advocate for uh, Black people and people of color in the community. Really? And she just wanted everybody to, to have the best in life. And it, who knew, you know? So is that when you say that, you know, some things that you are just grow up with in, in the personality, just the personality and the love that uh, your loved one has for something, it does, uh, you know, rub off on you, even if you didn't know even if you had no idea that that's yeah. what, they, what they was into, even if you never saw your grandma deal with uh, animals, you probably would have uh -huh. done something similar too. Exactly. Sure, it was in her and, heart. and that's the cool thing about life, right? Sometimes we go through these changes and we go through these directions and life takes us. We like, we was doing this and now I'm doing that. And it's just like, you never know. You just got to go with the flow and you can try to ponder on it. Like, well, why am I going through this way? And you see, I was able to, to, to link this to my grandmother, right? But to all that can't link something to somebody like we can, right? Like you can link that to your mom and stuff. It's still like, that's not up to us. Just continue to move forward because it's, it's a reason why you're going in that direction, right? It's a reason why mm -hmm. you aspire went in that direction that you're, you're continue to go in and me as well. So it's, it's dope. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not just a, and that lets you know, like the world, things that happen in the world, what we're what we're experiencing, uh, it's not just about you. There is a generation that's gonna come after you, right? I'm gonna tell you yeah. another story. I um in 2011, I was pregnant with twins, and I got to five months pregnant, and I went into labor, and they didn't make it, right? And um, super hard to deal with. You know, that was just a part of my life. I was of like, course. Oh, really of like course. about right now. But I had a, I had a, um, another childhood friend and she was like, I had a dream last night. And uh, this friend met my mother, but she wasn't able to be around her, around her. Because by the time me and her really got into a friendship, my mother passed away. So she saw my mother a couple of times. But um, okay. she said, I was sitting on the stoop uh and your mom walked up and she looked she described her right but she didn't describe mm -hmm. her as uh how she looked when we had met she described her as my mom as a young girl like a young woman mm -hmm. and so i was like okay so what happened when she <laughs> say oh, that sounds crazy <laughs> so right she said, she told me to tell you, don't be sad and that your kids is coming back and they're going to be uh, really important when um, when Jesus comes back. Basically, like they're going to be so important really? to the world. And I was like, I'm sorry, when Jesus, will you come back? <laughs> like, when Jesus Girl, you just gave me the chills. You chilling? I was freezing. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, take oh me now. God, I don't know what So we never know. And at that point, I didn't know my mother was so into the community and, and wanting to better. And what I know now, how I feel now about, you know, women just just loving themselves before they get themselves into any situation, mm -hmm. anything yeah. outside themselves, how important it is to structure your life and your character before you link yourself it, even if it's to have children, if it's to have a partner, whatever it is, whatever it is, uh, certain jobs you shouldn't be taking because, you know, that, is, that, should, that doesn't match who you are. And you have to know that earlier on yeah. in your life. That's something that's so important to me. But I know that one day when I have children again, um, they are going to take up what my mother uh, and I leave off even if they don't mm -hmm. see it day in and day out, how I'm doing yeah. this. Though I feel like yeah. when I have children, they're going to be with me everywhere I go because I want them to see this. I want them to know how important this is, you know, and if I have sons, uh -huh. I want sons, y'all. Uh, if I have sons, I want them to, feel, <laughs> have, a, I want them to have a heart for, for, for women uh, to, to be advocates for, uh, for women just as, 
you know, I would want them to be uh, for advocates for men. So it's super, it's super crazy how, you know, you just the generations and, and your lineage just stay strong. So if you start something today, mm-hmm. you have to know that um, whether it's negative or positive, it is going to move forward in your line. So, you know, best to do something positive. So this is cool. And I'm right. sure your two children are going to be out there like handling business yep. too. I was just about to um, touch on that because what you what you just said kind of kind of spoke to me. Um, You always got to do things for the right reasons, because Mm -hmm. if you're not, it's just never going to work out. I say that because you see how I got my nonprofit, but I, I do have my dog supply line and I do got my books. And a lot of the time when I'm in Clubhouse or something or when I'm in any type of platform, I'm pitching my nonprofit. Right. I pitch my other stuff too, but once you go on my bio, you can see that. And I only do that because if I'm doing this for the right reasons and I'm trying to trying to get my nonprofit out there and, and let everyone know this is the message that I'm trying to do for these reasons, then those financial funds, I feel like is going to gravitate towards my business because I'm manifesting something that's positive. You get it. And and I think that that's big when you said that. And another thing, my heart goes out to you for losing your children, but it's kind of inspiring as well on how you handle it and how you just described it. Because yes, it it is a traumatic thing, but then you go to say, well, when I do have kids, this is going to be the right time and and they're going to manifest all of this was going on. So it's very important to think like that because- Just because something happened like that, that doesn't mean it's never going to happen. Maybe it's not the right time. Absolutely. So it, it touched me when you said that. Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely feel like, because that was 10 years ago uh, and I was 26 years old. And who? Mm. Who? Whose mother? <laughs> you know, I desired it. I wanted right. it. Right. And I felt right. a promise, you know, in my children that uh, I would finally be connected again with that unconditional love that I lost when my mother passed away though I have it with my dad but you know a, a mommy and her baby there's, right. there's nothing like it you know right. mm-hmm. um but what was I going to do for those kids that I I I know I could do now I have I have right and because of my twins I have a vision so they weren't in mm-hmm. vain and they came for a reason and they came to teach me something they came and taught me something. I don't know what they came to do. That's that's only God knows that. But they came and taught me something. They came and gave me vision. So I'm forever, ever, ever happy uh, that I got to to meet them and be with them See, for the five months. Look I at had, that you know? beautiful thing that came out of such a traumatic situation. Absolutely. And that's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <Yes. girl. laughs> and that's how life will do, right? That's how life will do. Mm-hmm. I yep. want to talk to you about the uh, yeah. the coloring book because this is like Girl, like this. How we I'm do that? So <laughs> excited! The coloring book is similar to this, which is my actual book, right? Harper and a Wagon Tail. Same characters, um, completely different illustrations. So I think that was dope because anybody that read the first book, they want to do something different, but the same exact characters, so they can relate. And again, the reason why I created that, right, was because, again, I already had this amazing book and I was doing well. But then it's like, well, what happens when the parents are not there or when the parents are there and they have something to do in the house, like wash the dishes or they just want to keep their little one occupied while they're doing something? Pull out the coloring book as a child and still that was one of the biggest reasons why I couldn't like take online classes and stuff because I like to be there and physically be able to do something so my focus was more like hands on and I was like let me do this and then it happened it happened I went I went to my illustrator um the same one she's amazing and I was like well can it be completely different illustrations just to gravitate to um the kids more and she was like yeah she she made a dope cover and it's out on Amazon now Uh yeah Man, I'm so happy um, for you. That's so like yes, super yes. And awesome. it's like all of this, all of this came about within one year, right? And look, I'm I'm in my prom. Like I just feel like I am like this year when the, when 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 worlds start open up, I'ma just 
be like hitting them with so much stuff because I've been working. And yeah. if you believe in yourself, anything can happen. Like literally last year, why I was working in Manhattan at this place called Mulberry and Vine. Shout out to y'all because it was one of the best jobs that I've had. I learned so much. It got on my nerves sometimes, but that's just like any job with your peers. But I mean, yes, the best job. But then I got laid off because mm-hmm. of the COVID, because it was a yeah. restaurant. So it was like, dang. And then Taylor came about and I went hard. Like, girl, it was times where, like I told you, I got three dogs living with me now and I got two bedroom apartments. So it's not right. that big. And then when you tend to um to aim for the dogs that I'm going after, right? And I got kids, your family tends to get alarmed a little bit like, girl, you got kids in your house and you doing all of this stuff. I had to literally have, and if I didn't believe in myself, I wouldn't be right here today. I got my 501c3. I'm so much more educated mm-hmm. um, now um, than I first started. My family trusts my judgment now before mm-hmm. they didn't. Not that I needed their judgment to proceed, but it feels good that they know what I'm doing. And that yeah. when I do get another dog, they not going to be like, Nikwa, worry about this because Nikwa, you got your business. You know what you're right. doing. And if you don't believe girl you're gonna be stagnated some people are scared to even start and it's like they ask me i get inboxes like niqua when were when did you have the right time to start when did you feel like it was ready to go and i told them i just started and look where i'm at i just started i just one day was like yo it wasn't no plan b for me it was only plan a because you know why i went in with the intentions of this is not about me this is about somebody else and, and I don't want to um, discredit anybody that's not doing a nonprofit, right? Because that's not what I'm saying. But when, you, when you're doing anything, like you said, that has a bigger picture other than yourself, then you're manifesting that and nothing but good is going to come to you. So Absolutely. you have to believe in yourself. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's super important. It's super important to believe in yourself. Um, be, and it is. It's just like what you're saying. It's like if you don't believe in yourself, you can, you can be sure that you won't follow through because when you believe in yourself, please be sure, please know anybody who wants to start something, please know, even if you believe in yourself and you're doing the work and you feel like you're good at it, most of the people around you, if they are not doing something similar, they are going to doubt you. It's going to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. It's going to make you waver in your, in your thinking process, no matter how much you know you could do it. And it's going to, and at times it's going to make you feel like you can't do it. And so it's mm-hmm. true. You have to believe in yourself. That's the first step. And probably like more than you've ever believed in yourself before. Then you exactly. get around people. <laughs> yeah. Right. Then you get around people who are doing similar things. You make sure you get around yes. that kind of community. Even if even if it's not the same exact thing. Something similar. Somebody who you could call and be like, my family don't want me to get this new dog, and I know I have to. And they're like, well, girl, you know, this is what I did. So just go ahead and get the dog when they come home uh, from school or when they come home from outside, they'll see the dog. (laughs) Stick you out. (laughs) You know, somebody who just believes in, (laughs) you know, believes in Mm -hmm. the the process itself. You know, you need those people around you Mm -hmm. because you can be ready to quit. You do. Second. One of the one of the the things my my boyfriend says is sometimes you have to. Um, learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think that's the the big thing. Sometimes I don't think it's rejection because people get told no all the time. It's how you handle that no. Like for me, I done got told no so many times, especially about what I was trying to do. And sometimes it people tell you these things not to try to throw you off track. It's just maybe I was headed in a dire- um, wrong direction or my maybe my pitch wasn't right, right? Like mm-hmm. literally I was in Clubhouse the other day and I was pitching like my stuff and I was in the whole wrong direction and I got a DM and it was like, girl, you need to do this. Not literally telling me, but just like, you know, and I rearranged my whole thing and it made me really look at my business a whole different way And now I'm like on fire because I took that and like made it useful instead of being like, oh, oh, well, I feel like she was trying to play me. Or I feel like, no, thank you very much. Thank you. Because 
I don't know everything. And yes. even if I'm, I read a million books on the topics about dogs, I still want to learn. Yes. <laughs> so it's it, period. Yes. <laughs> period. I, it, yes. It's always room to grow. I don't care how old you get. It's always room to learn. Even mm -hmm. if it's not about dogs, I can learn something else to apply it to my everyday life, to apply it to my business so I could be better. So, yes. And even if it does yes. hurt your feelings, to be honest, sometimes you have to suck that up too. Even if they say it in a little harsh tone, <laughs> even if they like, well, I don't think you know what you're doing. Maybe I don't. Tell me what you want to hear. And you still learn from it. Right. You you might be able to tell them, don't talk to me like that, okay? Talk to mm -hmm. me nice <laughs> next right, time. Right. <laughs> but uh, you take that information because the bigger picture is what you have at hand and what you're looking to do and what you're looking to uh, to build. So the bigger picture is no matter if somebody says it to you nice or in a mean way and they hurt your feelings, if they got the information for you, take it and roll with it. And then later on, you can let them know, I don't like the way you're talking to me. Next time, you're going right. to meet me outside 15 minutes. But, you know, just <laughs> no, it, really, at least really you got the info. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, yeah. I totally agree. So what do you feel like is next uh, for you? Oh, girl, I, I, I got some big things coming. So a stop from my coloring book, right? Um, I would say, let's give it like, I want to do it around. Um, Valentine's Day because I just love love, right? And I'm all about the kids because that's our generation, right? That's who I'm really trying to get that out there because that's who's coming up. I'm coming out with my own crayons because we need some for them kids to color with. And why would they go buy another brand of crayons when I'm providing a coloring book? So not only that, my goal, I'm trying for the end of 2020, 20, 2021 is to have my own dog park um, in my community only because, girl, I love walking my dog. And now we only could go in like baseball fields. But like if it's occupied, I can't go. And scientifically, right, it is proven that dogs help with anxiety. It is proven that dogs help with um, like stress in a crisis. So in my community, it's like labeled as minority and it's a lot of you know, just, just craziness going on. And, but there's a lot of people that I see more with dogs, right? And males too. And I feel like if they had the only dog, dog park that I could go to, I got to drive there because my dogs is big. I can't take the train. So it's not really yeah. easy for me to get there. But if we had a dog park that was right there in our neighborhood, that's walkable, then if somebody is filled with stress in the house or if something's wrong and they just want to take a walk and they got their dog, why can't they have access, access to something? Because a dog park is where your dog is supposed to be able to play while you're chilling and relaxing mm -hmm. and not being not harming the public. That is the yeah. reason why they create dog parks because they want the dogs to have fun but not harm the public either. And unfortunately, we don't have them. We have ballparks. We have fields. And I feel like it'd just, it'd just, it'd just be another outlet that people can go to to maybe read a book and just chill. Yeah. Sometimes people just need five minutes. And with they dog. Now, if they dog barking and I'm mad, but I can't take my dog out, then we really not getting this thing across. And then right. not only for that, like it's just it's just a positive thing. Um, I just yeah. feel like we shouldn't have to travel so far. To, to, to get a peace of mind with our companion animal. So that's one of my goals. And uh, crayons is coming out soon. <laughs> I love that. Yay. And also, you know what to add to that? People who love dogs and who love animals but can't afford to help one or can't have them, they could go to the, to the uh, dog park and help, you know, or, or spend time around animals. There's some people you who know are what? so loving. Because, um, and and I'm still that. doing a rescue, right? And if I'm pulling mm -hmm. these dogs, they're still adoptable. Mm -hmm. So it's not like keeping them for myself. So that is so smart. They could come and probably do like, I could have certain days in the month where they do a meet and greet. Yeah. And see about, you know, matching a perfect family. So that, that's a great idea. Or even training wow. classes because we do live in apartments and the dogs that are larger uh, we have to be realistic. We do have to train them in a way that, like, they don't hurt themselves. 
or other people in the in the home because they're cooped up just like us. We're in quarantine. Ima- oh, I can't imagine how all the pets have been feeling all of these years that we just leave home all day mm-hmm. and, and sometimes just take them out once, you know, or something like that. I can't, I can't imagine now because we've been in, I've been in quarantine by myself this whole year. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine, but. And imagine you know, the elderly people. Yeah. That can't walk their door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or just like, it's, like it's, I said, cannot have them anymore and have a deep love for them. At least, like you said, they could go walk over to the dog park right in the, um, in their community and get that, get that time with the dogs around, you know, speak to the owners, get to know each other and stuff like that. That's, that's right. That's uh, right. That's so that's stuff. what I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to like, um, reach my community, the people that I would, um, that I would know that would be on the same thing as me because I would have to get the community on the same board, but mm-hmm. it can happen. Like yeah, my mission and what I'm trying to do and me as a person is lovable. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I bring a positive energy anyway. So if I get everybody on the same page, then girl, I'll be letting you know to come check out my dog for. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Um, yes. So yes. I love this. I love this stuff because um, it's not uh, like you don't have to be about pets, animals. You don't have to be about that at all. But it's about, you know, the better or the, the just bettering what's around you first. A lot of people, exactly. you know, they want to go to the other sides of the world, send, send money over to the kids across, uh, you know, across the world because they don't have food. Like when right now, right here we're missing out on things and the better and stronger we are next to each other, the better and stronger we are, um, you know, worldwide. So it's super important to have the the mindset that you have when you see a problem, work on it, fix it. And you'll be successful when you see a problem and you, and you work towards fixing it, no matter what the problem is. So that's important for, for, uh, for people to know too. So you're showing that in your everyday living. I really commend that. I really, really, you know, super happy to have met you and um you know met someone like you Thank doing you. those things yes and i am I'm, I'm really you excited about the coloring me. book <laughs> so I, I, I want one. Want everybody go check it out it is yes. it is super dope it is super super dope i'm so excited um yeah. that's one thing you know you you mentioned that it, even if you don't um, necessarily gravitate toward dogs or you don't have a dog, it's okay. You know, we, we can still be connected. You can still feel right at home at Port of Palms because you see what I'm trying to do as far as the kid thing now. So again, it's bigger than just the dogs, right? If I get people to be on the same page, like, and, and say, if they ever found a stray dog, now they know what to do. Now they won't just go past the dog. And, and, I'm, and I'm getting my message through in different ways that people can actually connect instead of just a sad dog on a poster. Sometimes mm-hmm. people give their dog away not because they're being abused. It's because they can't afford medical. So <laughs> it's hard for them too. So we need to understand that it's not always a bad situation when somebody is giving away their dogs. When somebody is is surrendering their dogs at the shelter, it's not always because of abuse. So we have to have compassion towards them animals and them children that is in the family with that dog because sometimes it's just simple as a vet bill. You know what I'm saying? So anybody, you know, that that don't have a dog or know anyone. Um, that does feel free to check out my website. Um, you said something also about behavioral because that's huge. That's huge because dealing with big dogs, even if they not on attack mode, they could still be um, like chewing, chewing stuff in the house. Like if they have anxiety. So not all the time it has to be attacking your furniture could get messed up. And one of the things that my company does offer is free resources for behavioral um, training and, and steps you could take. So if you have a dog, yeah, if you have a dog that is really crazy or that is on a verge to being surrendered, Mm -hmm. even DM me. Like I would personally reach out to you because we we are trying to eliminate that. We are trying to eliminate these dogs from going to the shelter when we can potentially fix it. 
So, I yeah, I wanted that. to shoot that out there, too. You know what I was going to ask you, the last thing I was going to ask you before we move into our introvert corner. Um, if okay. I, right, so I'm in Harlem, but if I'm walking down the street and I see a dog who looks like they really are in need, they're alone, is there a way Call to me. reach out? Call me. Um, you, well, you, I got, you, I think you have my personal number, but if nobody has my personal number, then they can always reach me on DM. But if you personally see a dog or someone reaches out to you because they've seen this video um, or this podcast, I transport them myself. Like I literally use my own vehicle. So no dog would get unseen by me if mm -hmm. I'm able to get to them fast. Like if yeah, it's right. in the Brooklyn tri-state area, I am on my way. Even if it's a couple of hours, just like no crazy way like Jersey because it would take me a lot to bring it back. And then I don't know okay. the temperament. You get yeah. it? Um, but I always have a cage in the back of my seat. But I'm there. Playing. Like, I'm there. <laughs> like, I'm dead serious, girl. I'm not <laughs> playing with this. Like, anytime people have called me. Like, yo, I seen a dog. And if I can't take it physically because I do have three, I'll call one of my rescue teams. Because I'm partnered with Amsterdam Dog Rescue and other um couple of other rescues that I transport for. So there's ways to get in contact um, with me, even if you don't have my direct you know, information, I'm partnering with different um, organizations too, just for transport alone. Because a lot of organizations don't have that. A lot of people don't want to use their vehicles to be transporting these dogs. So right. yeah, I use my own vehicle. So anytime you see something like that, holler at me. Yeah, I love this. And, and, and for, uh, uh, you know, the last little thing is for people who really feel like there are no resources, there's resources for every thing in this world even if it don't have nothing to do with animals it has to do with yourself there is a resource for every single mm -hmm. thing you can find funding or or uh be uh put together with an organization of any kind you have to look for it you will find it that's what that shows mm -hmm. me and in that work and you yep yep that's so that's so awesome all right so we're coming to the bottom of the podcast and at the uh, end of every podcast, I have something I call the introvert corner. I am a stark okay. introvert. So I don't think you're an introvert, but you might be. You might be one that uh, is, uh, you know, who's good with talking to people, uh, personable, but, mm -hmm. you know, when it's time to reboot, you, you know, you take a little time to yourself, it takes a little right. extra time for you to reboot. So whether you are or you aren't, that's totally fine because the introverts watching us are going to hear you answer three introspective random questions and they might learn something about life that they wouldn't have necessarily learned on their own because, you know, we be, we, you know, y'all want to get on the right. roller coaster. Y'all do what y'all want to do. I will hold your bags. I'll see y'all when y'all get down, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So, but when you come down from the ride, I'm going to ask you, how did it feel? I'm right there. <laughs> <laughs> what was the turn, you know? And, and so I, I want to know, but I don't want to do it, you know? So that's what right. this is about. <laughs> okay. All right? All right. So question number one, what makes you curious? Something that I can't figure out on my own. <laughs> like if off the top of my head, if I can't figure it out, or if there's an animal I'm not too sure about, or I'm just unsure, I'm curious. If I can't figure it out in like a couple of seconds or a minute or so, I'm like, I need to find out what it is. Oh, I need to good. find out. So I'll start with some research. I need to get to the bottom of it. I need to know. <laughs> I hate feeling like I'm not able to put two and two together or understand something. So that's what kind of makes me curious about anything. Uh, for me, it is what, kind of what we talked about earlier, how we all connected, parents to mm -hmm. children, grandparents to grandchildren, how we're all so connected in our lineage, like from beginning to end. There's things that we do now. Um, they talk about tribes in Africa where the young men, they get up in the morning and they go stand outside the, the gates of the village. And here they call it, you know, riffraff they they said they loitering that's what they call it here mm -hmm. but it's in our blood mm -hmm. it's in our dna because what they're doing back home is they're protecting the village so the young men are going to stand outside and the young elders are inside taking care of you know whatever they're doing but they're protected because the young men are outside it's just innate 
And when we see, sometimes it'd be so cold outside, like, why are you standing in front of the building? What's wrong? It's just, yeah. you know, they don't even mm-hmm. realize what they're doing is in their DNA. So I'm super curious about mm-hmm. things like that. You know, wow, girl, you just made me curious about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we don't realize how connected we are from the beginning of no. time to, the, to the end. And we are, we are nothing is new under the sun. It's like we the all... same thing going on, but out here, they, they, they call it or look at it differently yeah. than out there. Yeah. Right. It's I crazy. mean, everywhere in the world now, uh, you know, people of color are, are seen, uh, are criminal criminalized but you know here in america is really really terrible and um you know so it's seen as a criminal act here but really it's something that's because it's something that's innate in us and you know anything that connects you back to where you're really from was criminalized here you know but it's in us it's in us and it's not a bad thing it's a good thing it's all about protection i wish the other stuff that came with it sometimes uh, was not a part of our, you know, situation, but we, we grown, we'll, we'll get there. You know, we just have to really talk right. to each other and teach each right. other things. You, right. you got to embrace the good and the bad, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Embrace it all. Okay. So number two, who are your guides or coaches in life? I have three important guys that are in my life right now that teach me every day and that I hope and pray that they stay with me. Um, mm-hmm because they have a big impact on how I see things sometimes. And that is my father. Um, That is um, my brother-in-law, Sean, and my boyfriend, Garrison. Um, They inspire me just having them um, from a men's point of view um, and how educated and and when you you have that kind of support system, right? It it just feels amazing. to have people believe in you and to have people, you know, that they're not going to stay you in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. And it feels good, you know, to have that. Some people um, don't have their fathers or they can't even list three male figures in their life. So yeah. I just want to say that I'm fortunate. I'm just, I'm, I'm one of the few that, that I'm able to list those people. So shout out to yeah. you guys. They, yes. Yeah. Shout out to the dads. Yeah. And you know what, my, my God and my coach is my dad. Uh, he's not the only. Uh, my dad and my mom and who else? And I'm going to say my twin. So it's family. And everybody's not here. But absolutely, my father's here. He's still here. That's my ace. That's that's my me. I call him my me. Right. <laughs> so you see right. him, you see I him, love you my see dad. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. The <laughs> important. The important. I, I love that man right there. Um, I do have a son too, um, but I'm trying to be his coach. You know, I'm trying to steer him in the right direction and, and trying to be, be someone he could look, look up to, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's why that's my baby. Yeah. Sometimes our youth uh, really teaches us something. I have a little sister who's 19, but I remember I picked her up one day. She was probably about six or seven or something like that. Mm -hmm. Picked her up from school and we went Mm -hmm. to McDonald's. I saw a penny on the floor. I was like, sister, I don't know why we call each other sister. Like we don't got names, but I'm like sister, <laughs> look at the penny. You don't want that? She was like, <laughs> I tell you, my she was like, that's stealing. I was like, oh, oh, don't touch the penny. Then I'm so sorry. I didn't want to. I, that is not stealing, but okay, it's fine. But they're so pure, and they teach you things. They teach you yes. how to get yes. back in touch with your purity, you know? I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I will yep. never tell you to do something like that again. She was like, <laughs> you steal? I was like, girl, no. It's just a penny. Girl, no, right? <laughs> they <laughs> are. They're so innocent. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, our, our, our youth, they guide us, too. They they get us right mm-hmm. back where we need to be, for sure, so what they do they do the son could definitely be a guy so yeah my dad and my mom and my twins like i said earlier the twins they uh they helped me get in touch with my purpose uh my mom come on that's she she got me here and she she is a part of who i am and my father that's just my me he uh he's my elder he taught me teaches me so much about character i'm big on character and honoring myself and my father always says you know your name, right? We know our tribe name mm-hmm. and we know what our tribe does and things like that. He's African, if I didn't mention that before. So my mm-hmm. dad's from Africa. So he's, he says, you know your name, know your tribe, and you live and die by your name. 
So the same thing here, we would say stand for something or fall for anything. And that's mm-hmm. what my father, he really pushes that in me. And I really, uh, you know, he, that guides me in everything, business decisions, life decisions, everything. So right. it's important. It's important. Yeah. People, it, there's a lot of uh, people who don't realize how important it is to have a uh, strong male uh, presence in your life mm-hmm. as a woman. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people just talk about mm-hmm. uh, f- uh, boys missing out on their fathers, but women, we need our dads too. It's no joke. We yes, need our dads. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. It's very yeah. important, um, especially in early stages of life. It, it is. Mm-hmm. It is. And some yeah. people um, don't get to grasp that. Um, yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, still. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We're virtual. That's right. Right. All right. So, last question. All right. Number two. I'm is, ready. Yes. <laughs> okay. Number <laughs> you two. You always have my little dish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what would you want to be famous or known for? I want to be known for making New York a no kill state. <laughs> That would be like major because then that means no dogs are dying and all the rescues would just go harder. And then there will be more adoptable pets. So people would adopt and not shop (laughs) because that's a problem. If we can eliminate and like spay and neuter, um, a lot of people don't want to spay and neuter. And if you don't, and then you give your dog away or um, uh, like in Texas, there's a lot of people that don't go to the shelter that they just drop off their dog. Then they just reproducing. Now, if they are spaded and neutered, at least even if they are dropped off, they're not reproducing. So um, that's one of the major problems. So if I can make New York a no kill um, yeah. place, then we'll probably have to work harder. But at least we know that no dogs are dying and yeah. They have a better chance at life. Like it's no time stamp on their life because they was thrown away by their family. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah. and it has to start somewhere for sure. It has to start somewhere, yeah. and that sounds like Delaware. the way to start. Delaware is one. Delaware yeah. is no kill. Yes, yeah, no kill. So I'm saying if that can happen, I'm pretty sure that New York can do that as well. Yeah, because they definitely. Not is a no killer. Yeah. Uh, what would I want to be known for? I do, uh, okay, let's this famous <laughs> stuff. I don't want none of that. That doesn't even sound appealing. Yeah, <laughs> um, I would want to be known for healing and um, just creating safe spaces for women. Mm. Women first, and uh, that will that will uh, provide safe spaces for the youth. Uh, you know, in, in the generations behind, which would include men. So I want to be known for being a healer. My my name is Munina, and it means mother of uh, mankind. It's a derivative wow. of Eve from uh, the um, Quran. So in Arabic, mm-hmm. Eve is Hawa, and a derivative of that is Manahawa, and a derivative of that is Munina. So wow. that's what I want to be known for, what my name means. I want to be wow. you know, a healer, a nurturer. That's amazing. That's amazing. We got I work think to do. <laughs> it's so big for like for healing and women, right? Because that's that's the thing with me right now. I'm trying to be more spiritual, and I'm trying to um trying to like be into the chakras and find balance because. Even you, you know how you, you said women first and then men will follow along, right? Mm-hmm. The woman has to be okay and, and, and healed and in peace because look, I have a son, right? So all of that is going to manifest down towards how he treat people and not necessarily how he treat women, just individuals, period, right? Because we want, I want my son, I don't care what color, I don't care men or woman, I don't care cow treat everybody with respect i'm dead That's serious right. and if right. i'm not if i'm not balanced right or if i'm not in the right emotions or if i'm showing him something different then that's just drawing down to yeah him. and so you I can't expect beautiful yeah you can't expect uh you can't expect anything more from him if you can't provide that and even before they come into this world a woman's body is there is a child's yes. number one protection there was things that I was going through when I was yeah. pregnant with those twins that, man, 
it was a rough, I'm, I'm sure it was rough for them up in there. Yeah, I, I got a couple of uh, mm-hmm. sonograms. The first, uh, first it was a, it was a girl and a boy. Okay. <laughs> the difference between women and, and men. So <laughs> the daughter, she saw the right. sonogram. She must have felt that thing coming. She saw it. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so did she pop up? Uh huh. So my my son, they got to him. Say this is the sonogram, and this would have been his mm-hmm. face. Homeboy turned his whole back on us. He was like, "Can y'all get out of my face? I did not ch- sign up for this." <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's the difference between girls and boys, but. <laughs> You know, your body it wasn't what you're going it. through. It wasn't with it. Like, I'm not here for this. She was ready to come out. That's what <laughs> she was ready to party. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, I. I you're going to be a, a great mom because you know it, all yeah. of this stuff. Pray so. I pray so. <laughs> I might have to call you be like, come get him. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Girl, girl, I'm here. <laughs> you have to fight. <laughs> you have to fight. <laughs> So yes, but your body is is, right. is is the first place that your children uh, uh, reside, and they get in. So if you're not, if you are hurting, if you're in pain emotionally, physically, if you're sick emotionally, physically, where, you know your child starts off in a very you know volatile environment. So we want to just mm-hmm. be healed from 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 youth, from the young women. I want right. to I want to get into schools and just create healing programs for, for young women. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's going to be good. That's I think that's so good. dope. And I wish you the best of luck. And Thank I can't you. wait. I'm be right. Right. I don't know, but I you're doing like, girl, I need some of your healing. Yes. <laughs> you, and you know what? The other thing that came to mind, if you haven't already thought of it already, I'm sure you have. Um, th- uh, there's so many ways to help, especially now with the kids having have been in quarantine for so long even if they mm-hmm. get back in school next year I don't know what is going to happen obviously you know we don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but having your book in your um in your coloring book in the, the school system this is what mm-hmm. they do they are they have mm-hmm. funds and they have um you know programs where you your book um your coloring book and your crayons mm-hmm. Is one of the first things when the kids walk into to to pre K or kindergarten or first grade, they get that, mm-hmm. you know, and that could be part of curriculum, you know. So it's I think uh you know what you're doing is is this is great. It's great for the animals. It's great for for that. But again, for the youth, they need that mm-hmm. because we're not going to be here forever. But we have to nope. hand it down. And if they know, you know, if they have a love for animals the way you do and the way I'm sure your book shows, they're going to mm-hmm. grow up wanting to save animals, too. Yeah. So you got to get your book and your, uh, your coloring book and your camera. I know. For the school. I know. That is the goal. That is the goal. I'm yeah. working. I'm working. I got so much amazing things for the summer, for Valentine's Day. So everyone just stay updated. Like, That's you guys amazing. can follow me on Port of Palms um, on um, Instagram and I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. Aspire, thank you so much for like giving me this platform to actually um, get my message out there and just to tell my story. So it was, it was, I'm thankful. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody who's on Clubhouse, y'all got to find us. Find us up on there. Yes, <laughs> yes, on yes, there yes. So um, yes. thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'll make sure that any uh, links that you have to any of your uh, your business, your anything that you're doing, I will be sure to link it down below. This uh, video will be on YouTube, and then we'll have the audio in every other place that uh, podcasts are placed, so iTunes and you know Spotify stuff okay. like that. So we're gonna have the links in there. Um, All right, thank yeah. you so much again. Um, you made me feel so comfortable, and yeah. and I'm very appreciative of that. So I just hope that you have an amazing holiday. And um, I'll be looking out for like your DM or your email. Yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll be reaching out to you. All right. All right. Lady, right, y'all remember to inspire big so that you can inspire bigger. Lady, y'all. Fire, fire, fire.